Because of its deep significance, Passover has become my favorite holiday. So I want to share with you the basic elements required to set up a Passover Seder meal. I typically set up the table the day beforehand and cover it with sheets to keep it free of dust. The next day, it's ready to go. We use two cups, one for wine or grape juice and the other for water with the meal. I also use two napkins since one is used during the Seder service and the other for the meal. It's traditional to have fresh flowers on the Passover table. I also like to add little accents to the table that are meaningful, like the Kaddush cup my dad got in Israel and the prayer shawl I bought in Jerusalem. Each person has a Haggadah, the book for reading the liturgy, and I will often put it on the chairs if my table is very full. That way it's accessible for each person as needed. I prepare the food on the day of Passover so it's fresh. Certain elements are required for the Seder, so I'll run through the list of those things that are necessary to prepare. Each person requires a fresh sprig of parsley, so I'll usually fill some pretty glasses with water and place the parsley inside so it'll stay fresh. I place one of each element at the head and foot of the table. This way, I can use one near me to illustrate as I lead the service, and the other can be passed around after I demonstrate. You'll also need some little bowls of salt water for dipping the parsley in. I like to add a spoon so people can stir it just before using. For the harot set, I start with apples. You can use a food processor or a hand grater for this. Then add grape juice, honey to taste, and a lemon or lime to help preserve the color. You can add some nuts. I like to use pecans. You can also add cinnamon if you like. I put these in two dishes, cover and refrigerate them until it's time to start the Seder. Any extra can be kept for later. It's traditional to use horseradish for the bitter herbs. I like to find the refrigerated kind because that is the strongest. For unleavened bread, we use matzah, and we like the gluten-free kind. We think it actually tastes better than the regular kind. Matzah gets stale very quickly, so I like to put it in a Ziploc bag and then set it on the table. I remove the bag just before starting the Seder. You'll need to save three pieces and reserve them for your matzah tosh bag. If you don't have a bag, you can fold a napkin or linen cloth in quarters and place one cracker in each of the three pockets. This will go on the table near the leader's reach and will be used within the Seder service. Roasted eggs sound difficult, but they're really very easy. Hard boil one egg for each guest, and once they're cool, hold the eggs over a candle to let the flame leave black streaks of soot. This doesn't affect the inside of the egg, and you can peel and eat them just like normal. I also like to put plates of fruit and cheese on the table in case people get hungry before the meal starts. The service can last 60 to 90 minutes before the meal, and having something to snack on can be a good idea. You'll need several pitchers of grape juice and water on the table. The Seder requires four cups of grape juice. The size of your cups depend on how much juice you will need. Water is good for the meal, or in case anyone has a bit too much horseradish during the Seder service. Before starting the meal, light your candles. You'll want to have two special candles at the head of the table and keep those unlit since they are lit during the surface. 
There's also a traditional Passover meal that you can make with a variety of dishes. And while that's not included in this video, you can find lots of recipes for things like baked chicken, matzo ball soup, and salad that can really make your Seder an incredible experience. So there you go. Enjoy your Passover feast.